Welcome to part 10 of my Bullet Buddha Mods videos. In this video, I will begin by showing you that I figured out the reason why my Raspberry Pi died in the last video, and that is, as you can see, there is this white wire coming from this buck converter. The purpose of this buck converter is to reduce the 24 volts that gen the power supply generates to 3.3 volts, which is the only voltage compatible with the Raspberry Pi. And what that does is allows the Raspberry Pi to realize that the 3D printer is actually turned on, which is useful for the PSU control plugin. So I will just quickly show you the if you measure the voltage, I have the negative going to the negative pin on the MOSFET port, which is directly attached to the power supply. And I'll just connect the hot end to the wire. And as you can see, the buck converter is dumping 24 volts into the Raspberry Pi, which basically ended up frying my Raspberry Pi. That's the reason why it died. But I have good news, and the good news is I have finally received my replacement for the Raspberry Pi, which means like we can move on. So as you can see, I replaced the Raspberry Pi with a new one, and I've done a, my first print with the 3D printer now. I'll just give you a quick look, but I'm just going to commentate over it. What I can I will say is the print quality right now is horrible, but that's not to blame the new extruder. I need to do some calibration. I need to tinker with the settings a bit before I can actually do the comparisons. So I will do that. I then I will show you how much tinkering changed my results, and then I will also do the comparison from the comparison prints that we have done earlier using the old extruder. So right now I'm done with uh, calibrating the set some of the settings for the 3D printer. This is how many attempts I did, but I mean I'll just show you the latest example. Right now my settings still aren't perfect, as you can see from that top infill amount. Also you can see that the bottom surf finish isn't perfect on this one. And the reason is I damaged the print bite. That was my fault, not the print bite's fault, but still. I was hoping that it would be a bit more durable. Anyways, the side finish is better than it used to be from my earlier prints. and. Yeah, this is as good as I'm going to get for this video. I will make a separate review video about the, the new extruder Flex 3 Drive, and I will also make a separate review video for the PrintBite Plus. Those are coming, but especially for the Flex 3 Drive video, I want to finish actually calibrating the settings properly before I uh, do the review video. Uh, I just want to show you that this is a good finish on the bottom, and as you can see, it is pretty smooth, it's not as shiny as pr directly printing on the glass and it overall looks pretty decent on the bottom finish and this is the quality that you should expect from PrintBite Plus the one that I showed you before is my fault so right now I'm 3D printing the Control v torture test and I'm also going to 3D print the 3D Banshee yeah this should give you a good comparison for what should you should expect from swapping the extruders but i should also mention that the print results should be get should be will be fuck. print result will be better as you continue tinkering with the settings for the extruder The Control V torture test print is now done, and as you can see, it doesn't look that great. This is the new print from the new extruder, and this is the print that I had from the older extruder. So let's just compare these. So, first of all, the bridging test here just failed completely, 
as you can see this is the way it was supposed to look there's literally nothing there and the test next to it this circular thing it's also not present on the new print it did an okay job with the slope but it's not perfect as for these well first of all the towers as you can see just failed on the new extruder as well these weirdly shaped corners are fine this semi sphere is there but it looks worse but these thin prints hold on let me focus the camera these thinner parts look better than the old extruder in the old extruder they just merged with the rest of the walls so that's, that's one thing that it proved at least this looks about the same on the new extruder while the pyramid looks worse this is the tower that from the old extruder it didn't look that great but at least it's printed fully here you can see that there's basically nothing going on as for these slanted bits well they are about the same these look the new extruder looks a bit worse but they're about the same as for this sphere thing first of all we can see that there is some over extrusion going on that's something that i need to fix but other than that there is no zits on this unlike the old extruder but there is this bit that probably didn't get printed to the sphere that probably came from here so yeah as you can see the new extruder is that's the 3d printer by the way uh, the new extruder is significantly worse for now but <coughs> sorry i think calibration and tinkering with the settings will actually make it better than the old extruder as time goes by but unfortunately i don't really have the time to work on that right now so it won't be in this video but if you want to see the actual performance of the new extruder stay tuned for the flex drive review video and in that video i will actually i won't make that video until i'm done with managing the settings etc and i'm sure we will see better prints than the stock extruder considering that the stock extruder was pretty bad but as i said this is all i'm going to be able to do in this video so let's also look at the 3d banshee i don't expect it to look better considering the 3 this print didn't look better either but we will see So based on the time lapse that you just saw, you can pretty easily say that the, this 3D print was pretty much a disaster. So yeah, it didn't print above this point. So there's not, not really any point even in comparing these two, but I'll just quickly do it anyway. Only thing that we can compare really is this finish. and. Yeah, the newer extruder has a bit of lines going on, but on the other end, the some other <coughs> the actual tip of the ship is a bit more smooth. So yeah, this is pretty much a pointless comparison considering that the 3D print failed. But I just wanted to do it anyway. So so in I think in the end after. Be me being done with the settings for the extruder the extruder will be able to print better print quality because I'm saying this based on the few things that I saw like the better uh, thinner wall quality on the control V 
torture test and the better finish on the tip of these ships so yeah I think it will have a better print quality that's plus that's pretty much what's advertised and pretty much what everyone that used this extra says as well so yeah it's just something to do with my setup and I'm assuming that it's something to do with my settings so I'm going to play with play with those a bit more and hopefully by the next video the print quality will be better and we will be able to move on to other things I think one of the reasons why the print quality is lower right now on the new extruder is because I'm using a full-size motor and it has since it's bigger it has more inertia which means it doesn't well it can't basically react to the signals as quickly as a smaller motor could so I ordered a NEMA 17 but pancake size NEMA 17 motor which is the type of motor you usually see on let's say a titan extruder so hopefully it will arrive soon for some reason the tracking link isn't working right now I don't know if they give me a wrong tracking code or it's lost in shipping but I'll have to wait I'm hoping that changing the motor to that will improve the print quality and I'm also hoping that it will si silence the sprinter because as you can hear in the background it's right now obnoxious I don't usually record when the 3D printer is running but well, it basically ran out of time so I have to record these bits when the 3D printer is running so sorry about the noise this is the part of the print white plus that got damaged as you can see there is a square-ish mark on the print white plus and it comes from the last XYZ test cube that I 3D printed and the reason that it happened is because I was impatient and tried to remove the cube without letting the surface cool down first which means the adhesion was way too strong to be to remove the 3D print and cause damage on the surface this is not a huge deal I'm hoping I don't think it will affect the rest of the surface and I'll just print smaller parts on the other parts of the surface and if I'm printing something big this will probably leave a mark under the rest of the 3D prints but I don't think it's too significant considering that the 20mm cube is pretty small so unfortunately I'm not going to be able to do anything else in this video because I don't want to do anything that involves 3D printing until I'm done calibrating the settings for the extruder uh, I want to finish the spool holders but again for this reason I'm not going to be able to do that so now I will just talk about the control box idea that I mentioned in the last video as I said in the last video, I'm not ca happy with my current control box, it's very hard to reach inside. Everything is mounted pretty terribly, the construction quality isn't that great. And the main reason is that is because I basically rushed the control box, it took me about 3 weeks to do. And I basically wanted to finish it in 2 videos, so because of that I just rushed it towards the end and... Yeah, the end result isn't that great, so... I'm going to redo that as I mentioned in the last video as well and right now in this video I'm not going to be able to do anything too significant but I will just quickly talk about the prototype design that I have in mind but before I talk about it I just wanted to preface this by saying that the design is subject to change and also I'm open to any new opinions so if you think there is room to improve just let me know in the comments below but otherwise this is the design that I've planned. Here you can see the front of the control box. The 10 inch LCD part is, I don't know if I'm not actually going to put an LCD there, that's just a placeholder for now. And the thing next to it is the handle for the door on the front. And you can see the top view here. So there I will have a door on a hinge. The way the door is going to open and close is as you can see here, I'm going to have magnets on the corners on the side that it closes to. I put four magnets there on the design, but again, that's subject to change. Here you can see the sides of it. One side will have 220mm fans and the other side is going to have a single 120mm fan configured as an exhaust. 
along with the exhaust for the power supply and this is the back side of the control box here you can see a bunch of connectors these circular connectors are the type that you find on cheap Chinese you know junk electronics I'm going to order some from AliExpress and I'm going to connect most of the things using those connectors only thing that I'm not going to connect using those connectors is the heat pad and for that I'm probably going to use a Molex Minifit Junior style plug because I have a few of those as PCI Express extensions so I can I will just crimp those I'm not going to trust those circular connectors for something that high power moving on to the internals if you haven't realized from the front view yet uh, the construction will have two layers the bottom layer is supposed to have the power supply in it and it's not going to have a middle plate I'll explain that in a bit it will make cable management easier and it will also allow me to mount the power supply in a more compact manner and what I mean by the middle plate is if you look at this picture which is the internals from the top you can see there are these co circular connectors that I mentioned in front of that there is th this panel and that panel is supposed to be the panel that I'm going to mount the electronics to. So if you look at the picture for layer 1, you can see I've just laid out some of the electronics there. I must say that I didn't measure anything, this is just me eyeballing, so this will change. But no, this should still give me an idea for how I'm going to do this. I'm going to 3D print most of this out of black plastic. I'm probably use, going to use some carbon fiber on the back panel to you know, just make it look better. And I'm probably going to use the uh, aluminum plates for mounting the electronics. Because ideally I'd like to allow them to share a common ground if possible. And I'm not sure about PLA's anti-static characteristics. So it's probably better to just use something conductive. So That's how I'm going to do it. So again... This is designed for now, it's subject to change, and I'm open to any new opinions, so if you think there are good ways of improving the design, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, please leave me a like below, and thanks for watching.